Welcome to another episode of Pear Tree Ranching. Today we're on our problem horse series again. We'll be working with Cisco. So we're just getting him saddled up. We saw in the last episode how we used our bare minimum with the saddle on. Tested that, it was going good. We did the rope behind the horn, showed how we built up to that move and how that can really start to show these spots where when a horse that wants to rear and be stuck with their forward a lot of times it can be the angle of the feel on their nose that causes them to feel wadded up using this move can unstick the feet and then we use tying him around to help challenge him we saw that little bit of rearing and how he found the way to step his shoulders to the outside so today we're going to go over those things check it again and move on to our continued and then list by playing with some obstacles follow along Okay, so what we're going to look at first here is I'm going to go through that bare minimum checklist. We've talked about it. It was relax with your head down at a standstill, even under perceived duress. We use the flag shushing around to help create that um, commotion. Then we did forwards, backwards, right, left, up, down, and stand still with all the body parts, walk, trot, canter, and backwards. Gallop is on the list of speeds that we need to be able to get a horse going, but for now on this bare minimum list, we're doing walk, trot, canter, okay? We did those different directions with a few exercises. We did sideways along the fence with our head down and relaxed. We did walk, trot, canter on a circle on a 12-foot line, relaxed. We did backing with our head down and relaxed. We did the rope over the withers move. We called that horse burpees. <clears throat> and that's kind of the move that I've talked about being, if I could only have one groundwork ex exercise, I would probably pick that because it does all the body parts in all the directions. So I'm going to go through that list just to check off. How are we feeling today? Use that as my measuring stick to get a gauge on the horse. And then we'll start getting into our end then list and have a conversation about what is that again, revisit those um, pieces, and it's a longer list. And then we're going to get out of the round pen and go visit some of our obstacles. <laughs>
guys, quick pull you away from your scheduled programming of our Problem Horse series. If you want more full-length training, step-by-step, -step, all the inside stuff, that's not on YouTube, that's on Patreon. You can go over and check out patreon.com slash Ranch. Get signed up there. There's a couple of different tier levels, and we're also starting to do giveaways there where you get in, I give a, month, a challenge, you do the challenge, upload your video, all that information is on Patreon, how to do that, how to get entered to win. we got some great prizes there. And that gives you not only the support you need to achieve your goals, but the motivation and the goals that you can pick and choose through those challenges to participate and play along. So let us help you go check out patreon.com slash Pear Tree Ranch. Now, back to your regular scheduled programming.
So you can see as we get into motion, and if we feel trapped around that head and neck, as I held that rope stronger and put that flag there to create some duress, the flag wasn't moving in a trajectory it was going to run into him while he was on the circle. That was just to create noise and start to challenge him. Then we moved to, hey, I mean it, relax head down and started to put some pressure there with that flag. And it drew out that worry and fear and resistance that we got pulling back pulling away, going up in the air, and we had to be able to stay in position, keep the pressure on till he figured out how to do something different, which we've already taught him what to do. Now he just has to be able to go to that positive answer under duress. Even when there's things going on, be able to think, clear his head and focus and say, I know what the answer is. We're going to move off of the circle for a little bit. We'll come back to that because we didn't do the canter. So next we're gonna go on to some of the sideways to continue forward motion with our head down and relaxed. You're gonna see how we hold this rope. You gotta be ready to climb that rope like it's 1983 gym class. To keep the tension while they're fussing until they find a way forward and off of that rope. Now you can let some rope slide if you can keep the tension. That way the pressure doesn't increase, it can stay the same. But in that moment, he needs to start to feel as we get progressive, the harder he pulls, the harder the rope is going to give him a feel. The softer he is, the softer the rope is. It's very important for us to help these horses realize they're in charge of the amount of pressure they run into, the amount of discomfort they run into by how they react. Okay? If I take my hat off and bang it on this poster rail, my head's going to hurt as hard as I bang it. That's up to me, the discomfort. And that's where we can get horses to realize they're in charge of that amount of pressure. And the slower and more thoughtful they are, the easier things are on them. So now, you can see how important this sideways with that head down is to getting quality forward. I have a feeling when we go back to that circle, he's going to now have an easier time. So sometimes starting out on the circle is going to make their life more difficult. We don't always have the opportunity or option, or if he goes somewhere and somebody doesn't know, oh, you have to do sideways first for him to be successful. That's creating rules. The only rule is there are no rules. We got to be careful about making that kind of a rule or teaching a horse to have that kind of assumption that, oh, I have to go sideways first before I can relax into forward motion. So now that stick in a vertical plane towards the hip needs to help cause him to turn. He didn't get it, so I shortened the rope and stepped to him. He found his way to turn and face. And we'll back off to get him coming forward into us. The more horse comes forward into us with softness and relaxation, better connection we're going to get. Now we'll go the other way. You can choose the horse to send the horse around you, or you can choose to squeeze them in between you and the fence. I like both working. Okay. So this exercise of the sideways started about building his confidence and getting some yielding with the body parts. Now it's becoming a positive pattern that he can do that helps trigger healthy behavior. We've got to have good patterns in our lives to keep healthy behaviors working. That question. Now we might go back Revisit the circle so we can get up, get through some of that canter, and see if there's not a change.
Okay, so we've had some good progress with the circling. We are starting to get some good walk trot canter. We were challenging him again with that flag, getting him to find his way to not be bothered and read the difference. So when the flag is coming towards him, in a way it's going to run into him. So it makes sense for him to move versus it's just happening. Like the neighbors mowing, some plane flew overhead, there's birds calling. None of that is about him. He doesn't seem to worry about it. Why does he have to worry about this? Is it proximity to him? Sometimes it is. Is it a preconceived notion of what does a stick in a human's hand mean? Maybe. Is it just his DNA? Maybe. There's all these variables that we have to take into account. And not take it personal. Just understand that we can't quit doing this when he's being bothered. We got to hang in there till he reads and understands the difference. All right. Next, we're going to move on to the rope over the saddle horn to get those turnarounds working. Good old horse burpees. That's worked great on the first time each way. So we're not going to bang on that. We're going to do a little bit of backing with the, some feel on the nose, encouraging him to have his head down and relax. And then we're going to go to tying him around. We did the left in the last session. We're going to need to do the left and the right today. So from here, we'll go do some backing. Good boy. Talked about in the last session about how this is something that can be really demonized. I showed you how we did that. If you've missed it, if you're done watching this video, go back to the last session and hear me talk more about that. But we're using this as a way for him to be in control of one that goes slack. So when he bobs his nose here, look, that rope has gone slack. He's in charge of that. It's as honest as it gets. It's as consistent as possible. When it's in the human's hands, it's very easy to be pulling and doing extra. Hey, buddy. Now, when we start riding and looking at, we need to recognize this ear is lower. The head is not level or plumb. I want him to learn to find a way to get that head in there. So we're gonna let him do that, but that's something to note, that he's twisting that head and when we're riding, we can start fixing that with the outside rain. You just need to be conscious, like there, his ears are more level, because he's actually bending through the neck the whole way, okay, versus just trying to evade the pressure. So that's something to note that we're gonna pay attention. We're gonna shush him around a little bit, because we've already got the stand still, and then we'll do the other side. There goes the shoulders, there, there, 
There's the move we need to happen. There. There. There we go. There we go. There we go. So it's important to recognize those moments when the shoulders step out and away, it gets the bend in his body and he's able to find forward through this shoulder, out. He feels like he can't go forward because his neck is bent. He wants to get here, power up and charge forward versus relax through his whole body and find forward with the shoulders going this, this way, even though the neck is bent. <clears throat> this is a really important piece for horses to learn and when they are wadded up there and just talk like that, because there's so much tension, okay? And so this is more than likely what's causing a lot of the problems is too much reins, not enough confidence to go somewhere. <clears throat> and when we can have him realize he can keep that rein slack by bending and relaxing and reach through his whole body, he'll find more and more comfort. So. We stopped, allowed him to have some standstill. We're gonna do a little more to the left here to give him a chance to be good at what he learned. Just that little bit of, oh, that's not so bad. We just shushed a little bit, got him to move laterally and forward. It's a leg yield and a shoulders in position, if we understand dressage terms. So we're gonna do a little more, turn him loose, rub on him, let him relax, then we'll do the other side. That was a great move. There's another great move. I'm allowing him to turn in a little bit by hovering back here. As he turns into the center, I like that he's dropping his head. I'm gonna allow him to bend because I'm really happy where he's at. As I allowed him to turn into the center there, and if I can step and not have him spin, he finds that sideways. Just like that. Okay. We'll untie him, rub on him, let him take a deep breath, and then we'll do the other side.
So now, this is the first time to this direction. We're gonna be patient, allow him to find comfort with a standstill, and then, there he goes, then we'll go shush him around a little bit, see if we can't find a way to find that forward, and again, stepping out with the shoulders. That last shot, we were able to come down the fence with the shoulders in, stepping with the outside shoulder forward and away. And then when he was finishing, he was starting to try to drop and relax that head and neck every chance he got. So like that, Ben, he's trying, he's trying, he's trying. We're not gonna stand here for a long time. It's really hot. It's gonna be almost 100 today. So it's early in the morning. We're getting a quick start so we can go before it's too much, be able to get him rinsed off and put up. So now, every time he'd go to spin, the flag, flag would be loud. Those were his opportunities where he could have stepped the shoulders over and away, found a little more straightness, gone a little more forward versus having to spin after his nose. That's like the inside leg coming on or the reins coming on, say, no, stay straight up there, <clears throat> even though we've got him bent. He's got to learn to understand that difference. And that flag is inside that cup as he's bent. It's here pushing him to the forward. So. That's a great first go that direction. We just need little bits so he understands the idea. We'll build up his physical fitness and his mental and emotional fitness to being able to bend and move like that. Okay, we're out here on the playground and we're going to give him an opportunity to have a look at this bridge and then the car wash behind us. And the idea really is to just ask him, how does he feel about these things? He might be perfectly fine with them, um, but I want to know. And these obstacles are made for testing out a horse's confidence with over, under, and through. All these can create a claustrophobic feeling 
on confidence with foot placement. And when they learn to do these obstacles, they build confidence. They learn how to be coordinated with their feet, be thoughtful with their feet, and think through puzzles. So let's see how does he feel. Well, that was easy, and that's our first go. I have brought him out here. He, I'm not exposed him to this yet. So clearly somebody has taught him how to do some things because you could see, hopefully, right off the bridge, I didn't have to do anything to steer him through the car wash. He saw that as an opening and went, oh, that looks like something to play with. So this is a great sign of his ability to think and understands what to do with these different things. Now, to continue to help him, we're just going to have to keep building up our communication skills, our relationship with this horse, and his confidence under duress to not have to go to feeling like he's got to rear and be stuck. So, this will wrap up today. In the next sessions, we're going to continue to kind of do the same that we've been doing. We'll bring in and show you there's a few moves that we're going to do with that rein. That will be active versus the tying around is an inactive thing for him to be able to gain confidence with that claustrophobic feeling and t being put in a tight spot. Now we're going to do some active things that will help set up our rides as well with an active rein and also starting to use the stirrup to bump to help push him to that outside. Just building on that shoulders in and leg yield positions. If you like what we're doing, make sure you click that thumbs up for us. We appreciate it. If you want to get subscribed, you can click here. If you want to see another video, you can click here. We'll see you next time. Hey, hey.